Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this video we're going to paint the demon Primark of Nurgle, Mortarion. So here we are with the fantastic Mortarion and he is a big beast. So in terms of how we're going to tackle uh, this guy, we're going to Oh, obviously I've already built him. I've left off uh, the wings. So both wings I've primed in wreath bone. So I'm gonna put them to one side for now because I don't actually need them yet. We'll do them towards the end. Um, and like I said, this is gonna, probably gonna be a, a, a big involved uh, video. So do stick with it. And in terms of what Tyrion himself, I've primed him with Death Guard Green. So if I just throw him around, you can see the green underneath. And then give him a real liberal coating of uh, Wraith bro, uh on top of it. Now in terms of how I'm going to do the model, I'm going to start off with some contrast paint and it's mixed with contrast medium. Uh, so the colour is uh, Militarum green and I've used a uh, one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium with the Militarum green. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the armour plates on, uh, on Mr Mortarion here uh, and just work this all the way around and you can see that you're getting a nice green colour and what's going to happen with the zenithal prime it's going to keep the uh the kind of the bits in the light nice and bright and it's going to keep those bits in the shadow nice and dark so just work your way all the way around uh the kind of the green armor do a little bit at a time don't sort of do half of one part and then move on to the next because what you don't want it to do is to dry whilst you're still doing it and you know keep the brush moving so you've got a nice even coverage like i've shown just there on the knee get it into all the kind of the nooks on there and then we'll come back once we've got this done uh, one coat should be enough just make sure it's nice and even uh, and we'll be looking primed ready for uh, the next stage where we'll do all the metallics next once that militarum green is totally dry for my money we got a really good kind of green effect, green colour armour, which gives us some nice depth so we don't need to worry about shading it. We will highlight it later on once we've done uh, all the other bits. So we want to have a look at the gold. Uh, I want to say gold trim, but there are lots of parts of gold on this. So just using a little bit of Balthazar gold. Uh, and this is the crux of this method. You do now have to be really careful from now on about not getting any Balthazar gold on, uh, or any colour really, onto the green that we've already finished because it will just be a little bit more difficult uh, to repair. Now in terms of what we're painting with the Balthazar gold, it's going to be quite a lot so if you're not 100% sure check the box art. Uh, but we've got things like uh, the grenades here, we've got uh, a lot of the uh, accoutrements uh, for want of a better better word so you know we've got the you know more grenades hanging off him here we've got a lot of um balls on the model uh, like this i can't think for the life of me what the proper uh name for them <laughs> uh, is but there's a lot of them uh it's one of those things that's literally on the tip of my tongue but you want to get them done as well and if you're not sure about what bits of gold then check the box out because there are quite a lot and don't forget to paint the kind of little nurglings as well nice and full of character there so get those done as well so like I said, there's a lot of uh, a lot of gold to do with this balthazar gold so work your way around the model uh, and then we'll come back we'll do the silver base next so there is quite a lot of gold on uh, on old mortarian there so there's quite a bit to do uh, next up we're gonna have a little look at doing some of the silver uh, so the colour I'm using for that is Iron Hand Steel, and I'm going to swap between brushes doing this. Just a little touch of water, uh, and we'll start with uh, Silence, the Scythe. You can see that's going on there quite nicely. Make sure you get it in all the, the gaps. Uh, you may be able to do some of this in a, a single coat. Uh, it may take you uh, a little bit more. And these uh, little things with all the smoke are called sensors. It was right on the tip of my tongue, so I had to just jump on Google quickly. Uh, they are called sensors. So sensors with a C. So all the metallic bits, get it done with the iron hand steel. Um, take your time and just be careful around bits you've finished, in particular 
the uh, the green on the armor. As you see, it's a nice color green. And by the time we highlight that up, it'll look uh, it'll look really nice, really good. So get that done again. Check the box art if you're not sure what bits need to be silver, and then we'll come back and shade all the gold and silver next. Starting to get a nice bit of separation now in terms of the colors. Uh, again, going forward, so we want to shade all, all the metal that we've done, and we're going to use null oil for that. Um, now, one thing I will say to do is, when especially when you're shading things like uh, this chain, make sure that it's a smooth brush stroke that you make. You don't want to go stabbing at it, because if you stab at it, then you'll it'll splash. We don't want it to splash, because we want to look after that uh, the green armour there. So just work your way around everything with all the silver, all the gold as well. So on all the bombs and sensors, make sure that I'm uh, on cam and in focus. It does help when I'm trying to teach you something. So get that done. Let it all dry. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll start the highlighting process. Let's start to brighten some of this metal up then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Necron compound. I'm just going to lightly dry brush the silver parts. Taking care not to get it uh, anywhere else. I don't really want to put too much of it on uh, silence, the size. I'm just going to give it a little bit because we'll come in with a with a much sharper silver highlight next. This is just kind of for those, those big silver areas. So just work your way around, dry brushing. Uh, some of these chains <clears throat> and then we'll come back for a sharper one for the sharper highlights we're going to go to uh, chrome from Vallejo Model Air so not thin this down as always because it's designed to go straight through an airbrush so it's already thin enough especially by the time the uh, the water from the wet palette comes through it and what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch sharp edges just nice and gently on there and don't be afraid to turn the model around to catch them all it just adds a bit of sharpness to some of these uh, these parts so we're going to work our way all the way around uh, the silver so you know that silence the side for example we also want to do uh, the lamp done which is Mortarian pistol which I gather just shoots through absolutely everything uh, in the game so get that done nice and straightforward and then we'll come back and we'll uh, finish up the uh, the kind of the gold metallics next so even though we've uh, shinied up the silver a bit we will um, later on dull it down and we'll do some more weathering on it for the gold we're going to go to Sycorax bronze Sycorax bronze pick your pronunciation and essentially what I'm going to do with this I've done most of it already is we're going to use a stippling technique and all we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stipple this in the areas where we think that we're going to get the most light now the benefit of this it doesn't give a kind of sharp highlight so it just looks a bit battered which kind of really adds to the uh, the aesthetic that Motarion's got going on with uh, with his armor so it's nice and straightforward and then what you can do is go back to it and then just kind of tap it a little bit towards the middle and that'll give you a nice um, transition between the darker and the shinier bit so work your way all the way around the model just tapping the highlight so instead of catching an edge we're just tapping that edge just like that and then if you need it to be bright day just go back in with a little bit more uh, Sycorax bronze and that'll be done and get it all done we'll come back and start the material next so the first bit of material we'll do is the purple, which is kind of the hood uh, and the kind of the top bit. And, and it, check the box art if you're not 100% sure uh, which bits are going to be purple. But there's quite a bit. Now on the hood, uh, if you do check the box art, you notice this bit is kind of a, a bluey colour rather than purple. So what I'm going to do is going to paint down to there. Uh, and I'll show you how to wet blend to that bluey colour later. As you can see, it's not covering fantastically well. Uh, over the light undercoat so we are going to have to do two coats which is no problem just work your way around take your time uh, when it comes to uh, bits that we've already finished to make sure that we don't spill it anywhere and uh, we'll come back and shade it next 
Oh, the other thing to remember as well uh, is these little chaps and any nurglings you've got on there, you can do a uh, base coat there, kind of close with some of the, the purple as well. Because we'll do them all at the same time. Just to get those ends painted as well, just want to use a little bit of inky by darkness. And again, this is going to be one of those that needs uh, a couple of coats to cover it. I'm just going to paint it up to the kind of uh, the purple. And once it covers over it, we'll be able to blend that across the join uh, quite nicely. So, like I said, it's going to need two coats, so get that done as well. And then I'll show you how to wet blend them in the next bit, and then we can uh, shade and highlight it all. So you can see that the Incubi Darkness covers, mm, or oh, when it goes towards the, the purple, it just it kind of almost blends in anyway. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of the the purple and I'm just going to paint it on where I want this transition to be. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to take some of that ink by darkness and I'm going to paint it into that purple there. And then as that dries, you'll get a nice wet blend on it. You can go back and forth if you want to get something sharper, but that's pretty good for me. Maybe I'm just going to clean my brush off, make sure it's just damp, and just play around a little bit. There we are, that's a little bit better, actually, uh, like that. So do that on all of the bits. You don't have to do it, it's entirely optional, but I think it just adds a little bit uh, to the model. And then we'll highlight it all next. So the first thing, you just add a little bit of depth to some of these robes, and for that I'm using Drooky Violet. And... Really, I'm just kind of, I've probably got too much on my brush there, uh, but really I just want to kind of focus on the kind of the folds and the kind of the rips and the holes. And when that dries, it'll just give me a kind of alternative, alternative's wrong, but it'll just give me a little bit of depth to the robe. So just work it in there. Same for here. There's nothing to stop you. I mean, that's not dry yet from the wet blend, but there's nothing to stop it. You kind of adding it down into the that part. So just get that done, and then we'll uh, highlight him up when we come back. Once we've got uh, that drooky violet dry, you can take some Jean Steeler purple, and we're going to work this along the kind of the tops of the folds. Nice and easy like that. Now my Jean Steeler Purple is very thin, so I'm having to just go in and give it uh, a couple of coats in some areas to just really make it uh, stand out. But essentially just try and catch as many edges as you can, all the folds in the fabric, because there are plenty. And then we'll let that dry. If you need to put a second coat on, do that. And we'll just give it a, a final bright highlight next. The bright highlight we're going to do is going to be with some Warp Fiend Grey. So make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And then you just want to use the point to just draw some of that bright stuff. And you can move it down into those areas where you've already got the, uh, got the blend going on there. Because when we highlight that part, uh, it'll be nice just to kind of accentuate that. And any areas where you do put this Warp Fiend Grey, you want to aim to get it inside the uh, the Jean Steeler Purple we put on in that last step. So we'll work your way around all the, uh, the bits of purple with that. The other thing uh, that I want to do once we've got this out is this uh, this part of the... I'll change my brush to a bigger brush. This part of the wing. Um, just along here. We want to give this a, a good coating of Warp Fiend Grey as well. Because uh, if we do it now, whilst we've got it out on the palette, oops, sorry, I didn't realise I was out of shot there. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for us. So be careful. Make sure you leave that um, wreath bone in the recesses. But this is just a really useful time to work on and get the uh, the base done on these bits of wings. Um, so make sure you do both sides of the wing and obviously both wings. And then we can put them back to one side. The last bit we'll do on here is we're just going to highlight the bottom of the, uh, the the dark reaper here i'm just using some thunderhawk blue for this uh, and all i'm doing is just looking to catch those sharp edges and i'm going to run it right up to the 
to the warp fiend gray that we've uh, already put on there uh, just to kind of blend the highlights together so get that done both sides and make sure you're happy with it uh, if you want to go brighter then you could probably you know, touch your fenrisian gray right on the ends might be nice uh, but we'll do the red loincloth next the color we're going to use for the uh, for the loincloth and also this little bit on the back there is going to be corn red so uh, I thinned it with a little bit of a uh, little bit of water just to help it flow off the brush now this is going to be one of those times where we just need to be really careful really patient especially when we come to the kind of the sides here uh, where we've already finished some of the work so just take your time get both those based and then we'll uh, come back and shade it next you may need two coats this is covering okay uh, it is a really good lovely saturated color so just see how yours looks and then we'll come back uh, very shortly when we're happy that's dry just want to take some null oil um not too much on the brush and what we're going to do is we're going to aim for the recesses and don't worry too much if you get it over some of the the raised area because we can always go back in and, and fix that but by doing this it's a couple of things one it, it kind of it'll dry quicker because we're not throwing too much of it in there uh, and the other thing it just gives us more of a subtle shade to it which means we can make it a little brighter because if we think about the uh, the colors on on Motari, and they're all kind of kind of quite muted so this red uh, and if you look at a color wheel red and green are, are nice and opposite on you so it'll really make it pop so just get that done if you want to add a little bit more in then you can again it's entirely at your liberty to do that and then once that's dry we'll come and highlight it next the first highlight colour we're going to use is a little bit of Wazdaka Red. Now I've thinned this down with a little bit of water, uh, just to kind of that consistency on the palette. And essentially what we're doing is we're just looking to catch these raised edges by pulling the brush along them. Now again, be careful of bits you've already finished. Not if obviously the metal and silver and things, that's easy to, to repair, but it's really around the, the green as you come towards the the leg that you need to be careful so just work around get that done and then when you're happy with the highlight uh, we'll go on to the just a, a little sharp highlight and some of these sharp folds uh, just to add a little bit of a focal point in there the last little highlight we're going to do is just going to take a little bit of kids left flesh now this is uh, fairly thin as you can just see there on the palette and what we want to do with this is just pop it onto those sharpest areas just like that and because it's thin it'll pull some of the red through but it gives you that really nice pop you can see on the box art so now that we've got all those colors done the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and repair if we've made some mess in in other areas so um, for example uh, I'm going to take some Corax white now as I always say about my Corax white is quite thick so i need to thin it down a bit and the things i'm going to cover with corax white is anything that's kind of like a, a smoke trail and obviously we've got this kind of trail going down here as well so obviously be careful around bits you've already finished but essentially it should cover most of this in just one coat because uh, we've got the the wraith bone base on there so get all that done with the white and then we'll come back and we'll fix the rest of it with some uh, some wraith bone. Once all that white is dry, we're going to then go use some wraith bone, and just we're going to use this then to just retouch some of the uh, those areas that we need to be a bone colour. Now, one thing you may notice here is that the uh, it's going on a bit of more of a creamy kind of colour. Uh, that's okay. And in terms of what we want to catch with this, so it's all the kind of bony bits. Uh, it's all the wings, so on the uh, on his attendants here, the nerglings, get them based back up with the wraith bone. And then make sure it's a nice, uh, decent coverage on there. Uh, and then when we come back, we will start to work on uh, these areas. So again, we're looking at things like all the pipes and tubing 
because uh, we're going to use some contrast paints to just really speed up how long it takes us to do uh, some of these uh, bits and pieces. So get that done, make sure there's a decent coverage on there, uh, and then we'll come back uh, and uh, make a proper start on that. Once we've got all of the uh, the wraith bone done as well, we're going to make a start uh, on these tubes and pipes. Now the first colour we're going to use is uh, Pterodon Turquoise, uh, and this is for all the tubes that Mortarion has got uh, coming out of him, going into various things, and they're also on the wings as well. So don't forget that. And what I'm going to do is once I've kind of got one coat on, you can see there it's giving you a really nice rich colour. Once I've got this one coat on, straight from the pot, I'm going to put another one on, but just in the, the kind of the, the recesses. Uh, and that'll enable us to then just give it a little highlight uh, to bring it up. So get all those pipes and tubes done. Again, if you're not sure, check the box out. It's pretty obvious uh, which ones they are. And then we'll uh, give it that second coat off cam and come back and give it a little highlight. So that double coat has given us a really nice effect with hardly any effort at all. So we're just going to give it a little highlight. And the colour I'm going to use is Baharoth Blue. Uh, just put a little bit of water in it. And there's a couple of ways you can apply this. Now I want to run it kind of along the just along the top there. And then catching some of the uh, the bits that are sticking out where the, the tubing is broken and the cable is exposed underneath. Uh, and the other way uh, to do it is you've got all these ridges here, so I just want to get maybe the top half of each ridge. Don't worry about that, we'll do that as slime next. Just like that. So just work your way around the tubing, giving it this little bit of Baharoth blue highlight because it really does help accentuate uh, the shapes. And then, like I said, we'll do the slime next. For the slime, we're going to base that with some warp lightning contrast paint. So the most obvious place we've got it is just here. On the mask and make sure you don't too much on your brush i just took some off mine because if i if i'd not i would have flooded that area so straight away you can see that actually that's that's giving quite a nice effect in terms of slime i'm just going to run it down there and then anywhere else you can find uh, slime let that dry and we'll give it a little highlight uh, before we move on to doing some of this uh, painful skin on the back Highlighting the slime, we're just going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of flash kit yellow. I've not got the palette cam up because it literally is just a tiny bit. And what we're looking to do is just catch those raised areas just to give them the highlight with the flash kits. And there you are, you have a nice, uh, quite glowy, quite bleh, kind of, kind of uh, slime colour. So next up, we'll... Um, what should we do next? Let's do all this broken skin uh, in here next. So for all that broken skin along the back, I'm going to use a mix of one-to-one uh, -one mix of Volupus Pink and Contrast Medium. And I'm just going to paint this over all this kind of bits of broken skin. As it dries, the contrast uh, paint will pull itself around and you'll get a nice... Uh, a nice effect that will in the main be pretty much done I don't think we'll have to do too much more with it so work your way around all that skin any broken skin you know don't forget in here as well get that done and then we'll come back and we'll do uh, oh one other thing sorry to do whilst we've got this out uh, is on the wood here we've just got that area and also inside the side you've got this here as well so make sure you do this with the uh, the Volupus pink mix as well because we can just get away with just one mix it gets a really nice effect there the kind of demonic influence on the blade the wood next so we've got like the handle of uh, the scythe and we've got a few bits and pieces on the little nurglings now i'm using wildwood contrast paint for this but the key is not to have too much on your brush because what i don't obviously if you think about it the scythe points down and what i don't want is all of the paint just kind of settling towards the bottom I just want to keep it moving keep spreading it around like I'm doing here so that I'm not leaving too much of it I'm just kind of staining 
the wood because that gives us a really nice effect that means we can go in and give it a decent highlight afterwards as well so there's plenty of this to do work your way around all the wood like I said there's the handle on the scythe there's some stuff the nurglings are holding there's this little bit here get that all done and then let it dry and then we'll come back and have a look we may not need to highlight it we may need to we'll have a look though uh, based on how this dries just thinking out loud and, and actually before we go and highlight the wood uh, which is dry i'm actually going to start the bone because uh, i think i'm going to use the same color to highlight both so the color i'm going to use for this is uh, skeleton horde uh, and this is for all the bone bits so you've got the, the kind of spinal bits along silence skulls and the vents uh, along the back there so just a little bit of skeleton hoard not too much on my brush because what i want to do is just slowly color them and just give them a little bit of a you know an off bone color to start with see that's probably a little too much there so just spread that round and then i want to give them two maybe three coats and that depends on how dark really that you want it to go and then once you've done that uh, we'll come back and we'll highlight everything up the color we're going to use to highlight the wood and the bone is going to be screaming skull and i've given it a good uh well, i've put a little bit of water in just to thin it down uh, quite quite a bit and essentially all we're looking to do is just look at those kind of sharpest areas on the wood where we've got these kind of little spikes sticking out uh, and similarly on the on the bone just looking to catch where we can and highlight along the kind of the sharp edges just taking your time making sure you haven't got too much on your brush Hope you get that nice point. So do that on all the wood and all the bone, and we'll come back. And I think we'll uh, we'll do the face next before we move on to the smoke. First thing we're going to do is uh, base the face with some Rakar flesh. So just be careful again of anything you've already completed, any bits you've already finished. Let's get that all nice and sorted with some rack of flesh let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll have a go with uh, we'll shade it next and then give it some highlights to shade the face we're going to use a little bit of a thony and camo shade now it's really important that you haven't got too much on your brush for this nice and simple just work that into those recesses said not too much so you're just kind of tinting it a little bit how much you do with this is uh, entirely up to you in terms of glazing some additional colors in there and uh, the other thing i did when i did have the rack off flash i did these bands as well uh, and i'm going to use some uh Ethonian camo shade on those as well just to give me some shadow on the strapping that mortarion has got so that i can highlight it all up uh, in the next step now when that's dry once we're happy that that uh, Ethonian camo sh shade is dry you're going to take some pallid witch flesh and we're just going to use this to highlight all the kind of the ridges that uh, Mortarion's got in there so there's quite a few see I've got a little bit of on the purple there which I'll uh, tidy up so there we are i'll do the straps as well just to give them a bit of a highlight in terms of how i can do matarian's eyes if you look at the box art the eyes are quite milky because he's got cataracts across them so probably all i'm going to do is take a very very small amount of one of the darker colors and just kind of dot that in the middle i'll use some uh pallid witch flesh to just do the eyeball and then i'll dot some uh, a darker color in the middle let's make a start on the smoke then so the first thing we're going to do is take some basilicanum gray uh, mix this 
uh, one to one with some contrast medium. We're going to paint this over all the smoke. So you can see that it's a very subtle effect. It just kind of shades the recesses. So paint this over all the smoke. Uh, and the other place you want to paint it as well is along these robes. So let me show, let me just finish these bits here so that we don't have any lines. Let's finish those quickly. Don't worry too much about seeing that. You've seen most of it. So I want to show you these bits here next. Of course, this goes into kind of like a bluey smoke, and all the smoke is quite bluey. Um, but there's a reason we're using the Basilicanum Grey, uh, and that'll hopefully become apparent when we move on to the bluey bit next. Uh, but what I want to do is I just want to paint this on the white bits. But I just want to make sure that I've got, uh, and I'm just going to do it on that bit there, because what I'm going to do is then clean my brush. And I'm just going to take it off the raised areas with a kind of a damp brush, just so I can I get that white uh, put back. So you can see there that I've just got the grey in the recesses, which uh, is what I want because I want this to be quite a subtle effect at the top end. And then when we get down to the bottom end, we'll do it more uh, like we did the, the rest of it. So if I kind of paint that about maybe halfway up there and get this all covered nicely. The other thing you can do as well is you can clean your brush off and then just brush it back down to itself so that you get that little, we well, can't really see on the camera there, but you get a little transition. So do that over all the smoke and then we'll come back uh, and I will show you how to just blue up the bottom bit. Next up we're going to take some ethermatic blue and we're going to just paint this over the smoke. And you can see straight away that when it goes over the uh, the Basilicanum grey, that you get that nice kind of darker blue and you keep the, the shadows that the Basilicanum grey has produced in the recesses there. So all I'm going to do is paint this all over exactly the same way as we did before. Now, when it comes to these sections here uh, along the bottom, I'll just show you really quickly. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go about that far up. Clean off the brush, take off any excess water, and just like we did before, we're going to brush back towards where we came from. And that's going to give us that kind of little transition there through the smokes. Nice and simple, really easy. So get that done. And then when we come back, uh, we'll just give it a little bit of a highlight. And that's most of Mortarian done, apart from, you know, a few bits and pieces and, of course, the armour. And just to finish off these robes, I'm just going to take a little bit of white scar. And we're going to do what we've done with most of the highlights. We're going to catch some of these sharp edges just to give us a little bit more of a transition through the through the colours. So all you need to do is just work your way around the model, just catching them. And then that's most of Mortarian done. We've got a little bit of work to do on there, just roughing him up a little bit because uh, ultimately he is the plague Primark. So there are certain amounts of decay that we need to add to him uh, but we'll do that next and then we'll do the wings paint the base to match the rest of your army and then we're pretty much done first thing we want to do is we want to just brighten up some spots this uh, armor and the color i'm going to use for that is uh, creed khaki and in terms of the technique we're going to do the same kind of thing that uh, we did on the metallics so i'm just going to attack it in a random spotted manner and just stipple on some of the Cree khaki into those sort of uppermost facing areas but also around a lot of these sores that uh, are on the armour as well 
just the kind of areas that catch the light. So just work your way around the, the model fairly quickly doing this. Uh, again, it doesn't matter uh, how tidy you are if you go a little thick or if you do build any texture up because actually the armor needs a little bit of that because, like I said, he's the plague god, so it's all pitted and covered in gunk and you know it's not very very nice. So I'm just going around and attacking it, just stippling on this creek khaki to give me some brighter points. The next thing we'll do is we'll take a little bit of nylac oxide uh, and that's just going to represent, uh, we'll use it to represent some verdigris. So what we're looking for is on all the kind of the gold parts, any kind of recesses or studded bits, we just want to drop some, some of the nylac oxide in there. And then when it dries, it'll give us a, a nice copper effect. So take your time doing this. Uh, I would say to err on the side of caution, start off with a little, just a few bits here and there. And if you want to put more on, you can. Um, we're going to use this again for the wings, uh, for the wings of the, the nurglings as well. Uh, so just, like I said, work your way around, take your time. Any gashes in the armour, any gouges, or any deep recesses, just like this. It's a really good uh, candidate to get some of this nylac oxide for verdigris in there just like that so work your way around again start off with a little totally up to you how much and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at put some rust on next and then when it comes to the uh the silver we want to add a little bit of rust uh so the color for that is scrag brown you can see here on the palette it's very thin down very thin hardly anything on the brush at all and what we can do is if we just look at some of this chain maybe we can just dab it down some parts of the chainmail. Don't need to, you know, go wild, but what you'll find is when this scrag brown dries, you're going to get a really, really nice rust effect. You know, you can pop it into the sort of some parts of the, the these links as well, just to add that effect. And you can see there, it's not even dry yet, and it's, it's giving a really, really nice rust effect. So work your way around the metallics and get that done as well. And this is pretty much Mortarian done. We've got the wings left to do, uh, so we'll start those next. So let's get on to the wings. So when it comes to the the kind of purple bit there, the first thing we're going to do is take some Magos purple uh, and just paint this over that area, because this will, this will give it some shading. But when it dries, it'll keep some of the... Warp Fiend Grey underneath, it'll just make it a really easy job for us to get in there and give it a really nice uh, highlight. As for the tubes there, I painted them exactly the same way as I painted any other tubes on the model with the Pterodon Turquoise. We'll do this here with that Pterodon Turquoise as well. So just work this Magos Purple all around. Be careful, you know, you can go onto the, the wing a little bit, uh, but try not to go on too much. Pop that on there work your way around um, to both sides obviously and then we'll come back and we'll do the, the hair next. For the hair or the fur, uh, not 100% sure what it is, we're going back to tear it on turquoise and again what we're going to do is just pop this on, be careful not to get any on the uh, Magos purple we've just put down, I was rather unsuccessful in that particular endeavour just then. So just get that done, probably put another coat on towards the bottom so it's lighter towards the top and then we'll get on to the wing membrane next. Before we do skip on to the membrane, let's just uh, highlight this purple and the colour we're using for that is Slanesh Grey. And again, very similar to everything we've done already, we're just looking to catch some of these edges, the tops of where this cabling is coming through, any ridges there. So just doing it in a nice controlled way that gives us a uh, nice highlight. Let me see, I've been a bit untidy there, which that's what Russian to get a tutorial done does. So again, just highlight all this all the way up using the edge of the model just to get a good, nice, bright highlight. And then we will do the membranes next. The first thing we're going to do is add the blue tint to kind of this side or this part. Um, 
and the colour I'm going to use for that is uh, Nilac Oxide and I've thinned it one to one with uh, Contrast Medium and what I'm doing is I'm just painting it into the corners just letting the capillary action uh, do the work because I'm pushing it toward the corner then it should give me a nice transition from the start and you can see there that that's going in quite nicely so make sure you do this on the inside as well uh, of the wing it's probably a little bit too much just clean the brush off and just push it in to the corner there this slime bit here I'm actually I'm going to do that exactly the same way as uh, I did it on the rest of the model so let's get that done and then we'll be able to go back and have a look at the uh, the this part of the wing we're then going to do exactly the same thing but with gullum and flesh and we're going to do it towards the the tips of the wings um, so with the Gullman flesh, it's one-to-one -one contrast medium to paint. You see that it's breaking up on the surface, so we just need to keep it flowing. And with this, it's just a, a little more awkward, but we are going to do exactly the same thing. So just move it so that the shine goes off. So with a clean brush, just going to push it back into itself so we get a a nice blend into it. Now the other thing we want to do with the Gullman flesh as well is we want to, and I'll use a smaller brush for this, but we want to really work it into some of these uh, these areas, these pitted bits. Uh, and if you want it to be darker, then obviously you can go back in once you've done the first coat and give it a second one. But we'll get that done, uh, and then we'll just have the veins really to do, and the wings are finished. So we've uh, pretty much finished the wings. Now there's just one last thing to do is the veins. And I'm going to do this with Magos Purple. So all I'm going to do is just paint along the vein. Just like that. And what you'll see, oh, make sure I'm in uh, focus, my apologies, uh, is where that Magos Purple runs either side, you'll basically line it in just like that. So do that on both sides and all the veins. And that's the wings done. Stick them to Mortarion. Uh, if you want to pop some Nurgle's Rot on, you can. Uh, just on some of the um, some of the boils and sores. That might add something. So get that done. And then uh, when we come back, we'll have a look at Mortarion all done on the turntable. There we have it, guys. Mortarion is done. What a fantastic model. Almost 500 points of pure carnage for the tabletop. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the channel and make sure that you guys are getting the content you want to see. If you'd like to support me, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, a monthly live frequently asked questions post, uh, which we do via YouTube live. And there's also a Discord, and some exclusive content on there as well. You can use the links for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% of all your wargaming. And there's also my recommended equipment on my Amazon links. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.